Hi all, I have an interesting game to show you. Magnus Carlsen against Vladimir Potkin. This is in the 2018 European Cup, round two. That's currently underway. So 73 clubs uh, are playing in this from 47 federations. And this is a round two game. Magnus playing white, e4. Vladimir Popkin plays e5. We go into the Joker piano because black plays bishop c5. That is now officially Joker piano territory. We have c3, knight f6, d3, d6. And now quite usual is castling. Uh, for example, castling a6 and the bishop gets a pigeonhole on a7, uh, for example, like this. And it's thought to be about equal. Uh, slightly different from the usual beaten track, knight bd2 here. Now uh, black actually castled. If black was totally concerned about the bishop here, then maybe, you know, a, a6, a7 to a6 to sort out the bishop. As it turns out, you know, after castling now, b4, bishop b6, bishop b3, uh, again, a6 seems plausible, but black didn't mind uh, knight c4 here, just invited knight c4, knight e7, knight c4, and black doesn't mind losing that dark square bishop at any point with a6 and c6. There's going to be knight takes b6 now. White castled, c6, and now knight takes b6 is indeed played. Is this such a big deal in this position? Not necessarily. Uh, black doesn't have any problem pieces. D5 is seemingly on the way. The knight supports, in fact, E5 here. The knight's actually well placed, it seems. Uh, generally speaking, reasonably well placed. Uh, we have A4, rook E8. Bishop E3, and now Bishop E6 trying to get rid of the bishop pair. So... We have bishop c2 preserving the bishop pair, but now d5. So black seems to be pretty comfortable. You'll note the role of the knight here supporting this, kind of liberating d5. So has black got any real problems here? h3. We have queen c7, rook e1, h6. E takes. And again, you know, it looks as though black's got a really quite an active, good looking position. Uh, so knight takes d5 hits. The c3 pawn. Magnus protects that. And now bishop f5. So it does seem there's the it seems actually quite lucrative this position because actually both knights are also looking at f4. Magnus plays d4 now, so that challenges this bishop on f5. And it's interesting here, it seems as though black could have considered e4. Uh, for example, knight h2 and then knight here, knight g f4. This position would seem to be no problem at all for black. Uh, it was rejected for some reason. I mean, maybe black can even consider at some point, you know, doubling rooks, putting the bishop back maybe to h7 to have it protected fully. But anyway, no, we have actually bishop takes c2. Queen takes c2, and now both sides, uh, yeah, with this, the bishops coming off, the f5 square might actually be more important uh, than before now, if white could somehow use that f5. But in the meantime, also, black is potentially using the f4 square. So it's an intriguing state of affairs, because both of these knights are looking at f4. And in this particular case, the knight on f4 is looking at g2, and Vladimir Potkin's plan is very, very logical. Try and coordinate the queen somehow looking at g2 at some point. So, in fact, we have e takes. And now uh, the isolated queen's pawn scenario is avoided with knight takes d4 and looking at putting a knight into f5. But it does run into c5 after b takes b takes. Knight f5, we seem to have a very dangerous situation indeed now after queen c6. Black's dreams, hopes and dreams, <laughs> seem to be coming true. There's a lot of coordination going on against g2. Has Magnus gone uh, a bit too optimistically here? 
And in fact, this seems to just positively invite getting into big trouble now, c4, inviting the knight in to f4. Now rook takes e8 check is played, and now bishop takes f4. So what's the idea? g2 is on the fire here. How can white actually do something about this? If white plays f3, then it's the end of the game actually. Queen f6, looking at a1, putting pressure on f5. For example, here, rook e2 is absolutely winning. The knight's just going to be picked off after queen takes, and we just pick off the knight. Uh, so what's the big idea here? Maybe, you know, this is what black had been playing for. How to defend g2. Uh, well, actually, knight e3 is sufficient, it seems. So protecting g2 like this, and also because the queen's on c2, there's a lateral defense on rook takes e3. Rook takes e3 is not actually doing much. F takes, and all of a sudden, you know, lateral defense of g2 here. So this is quite nifty, knight e3. And it starts to give the impression that white may grab the driving seat of this car soon after knight e3 because uh, actually there's also a semi open b file, a backward pawn target here, and the f5 square is still a bit sensitive. So let's see what happens now. Rook d8. We have rook b1 starting to target the poor little b7 pawn. h5. Okay, a5 fixes that down. This is now fixing this down, this, this target. h4, which does mean that it's suppressing g3, making that discouraging g3 from white. Rook b6, queen d7, and now queen b2. You'll note that the knight also guards against any back row checks. So alignment principle is, is being triggered here. Aligning forces against b7. And in fact, white does seem to be getting a big edge now, getting into the driving seat now. Knight d3 is played. Uh, it looks very bad to consider a passive defensive move, not just from the a6 perspective, but also maybe even just queen e5 here is very, very dangerous, potentially. Uh, that sort of thing. So actually we have knight d3 trying to do something this way. So if taking, then taking the queen is, is obviously not possible. Black ends up a piece up. So gaining a tempo and then interrupting that alignment, it seems. This is the big idea. However, the f5 square from earlier is still sensitive. And in fact, Magnus starts to combine two downsides of black's position here with this move, queen e4. Not only hitting b7, but it also still supports knight f5. And yeah, this pawn's also attacked it's starting to look very dangerous indeed this position there are all sorts of menacing possibilities black played queen d4 here if we look at this if rook b8 knight f5 is extremely dangerous because as we'll hear example queen g4 threatens knight h6 check and then also taking the the d7 queen which is by the way a tactic i've used a lot in myself in bullet chess in, in reverse with queen g5 threatening knight h3 check as black it's a nice tactic to be aware of uh very important and in this line for example check check f4 so threatening that mate as well of course g6 here rook d6 is strong very very strong with the idea now rook d7 trying to get that tactic back and white just crashes through this this is like the only move White's just crashing through with uh, a winning position, just winning a piece, basically. So these variations are absolutely lethal, it seems, uh, after rook e8, knight f5. If g6, then check, and then check, then we can either pick off the, the rook, or even better, this, and then knight takes g6. So black, 
miserably has to transition it seems with this move into what seems to be an inferior end game now that seems to be the best shot here <clears throat> to get the queens off magnus obliges uh now if rook takes then simply let's have a look if rook takes then rook takes b7 actually because the knight is also holding c4 here as well as d1 very useful and the king's yeah got h2 anyway uh if, if there was a back row issue that it doesn't exist so we have c takes d4 magnus is going into this rook and pawn ending now a pawn up check and still with that backward b pawn that horrible backward b pawn uh means now that white is building up yeah this looks to be a winning position king g7 king e4 offering g2 for taking up b7 but otherwise the king is just going up there to sort of take this pawn itself and then march the c pawn to queening so black takes on g2 and now rook takes so we've got two dangerous pass pawns black can try and create pass pawn himself that's what is tried c6 g4 c7 rook c2 now we have king d3 rook c1 king d2 so the rook is ejected from this first rank now that's very useful let's bear in mind we have a6 g takes and now a7 and the pawns are actually looking after each other now immunity the rook can't take on c7 without that one queening uh so that means after h2 the rook can just drop back and this is totally winning there's nothing black can do so yeah very elegant it seems as though magnus in this game was playing with all the dangers that we worry about with knights on f5 and f4 but it seems yeah against knight f4 with the queen coordination it was sufficient to put his knight back on e3 and then he really just got into the driving seat with black's backward pawn and in fact black's f5 square later became a major issue combined with the backward b7 pawn so overall a highly instructive game showing how it's almost as if magnus kind of said you can have your dream possession but maybe it's not it's not the dream you think it is and then and then he just seemed to get into the driving seat after okay what do you think about this game comments questions like shows appreciated thanks very much